All right, so our next, next guest speaker is Major uh, Stephen Hudak. Uh, he is a 2007 graduate from the uh, United States Military Academy. He got his Bachelor's of Science here in Computer Science, and he has a Master's of Science degree uh, from the Georgia Institute of Technology. Uh, he came over to the Cyber Branch in uh, 2015, and since then he's held a couple of cyber work roles and cyber jobs, and right now he currently serves as the Cyber National Mission Force Task Force 4 and 61 National Mission Team Lead assigned to the 780th. And turn it over to Major Hudak. All right, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, for those about to uh, branch uh, cyber, congratulations. You're gonna be joining the, uh, the best branch in the Army. Uh, you know, going on about 16 years in the Army now, I started off as a military intelligence officer, then counterintelligence officer, working in uh, infantry brigade, alongside a uh, cavalry squadron. I can absolutely say, hey, cyber is the best. You should all be excited. Uh, even Navy, who's gonna get to go information warfare. Uh, you're going to have a, a fun uh, career ahead of you, and I uh, look forward to talking about some jobs you can expect as a lieutenant and kind of my expectations of lieutenants as a, a field grade officer. Uh, also, would be remiss if I didn't say I'm a little bit jealous. You know, when I uh, graduated 2007, uh, cyber wasn't an option. Uh, if I had the opportunity to come straight out of West Point working cyber, uh, maybe as a developer, can talk some of that later. Uh, that would have been, you know, amazing. But it didn't exist, so I had to go MI and then try to fight my way to, to cyber once the uh, Army finally uh, did create it. Uh, so I want to start off uh, talking some of the jobs that I've had as a, a field grade officer and the uh, lieutenants that I had working for me. Uh, most of my experience has all been on the offensive side. So if you've got any good uh, OCO or offensive cyber questions, uh, that you think of, uh, feel free to ask those and uh, I'll answer those as well. Uh, first job as a, a field grade officer working offensive cyber was something called the uh, Joint Mission Operations Center Director and Chief of the Cyber Solutions Development Georgia. Yes, that's a mouthful. Uh, it meant I ran the, uh, the offensive infrastructure where we actually did, as I tell my wife, the hacking from and then I was also in charge of the uh, developers. Uh, down in Georgia. This was before 17 Delta, before 17 Bravo. Uh, everybody was a 17 Alpha, maybe some holdover 17 X-rays uh, at the time uh, before they all became Alphas as well. Uh, running that JMOC, uh, really important mission for offensive cyber. Uh, the JMOC, that Joint Mission Operations Center, is the room where we do all the offensive cyber missions from. A lot of thought that goes in there. I had uh, one lieutenant on a rotational uh, period, uh, wasn't directly assigned to me, working as something called a uh, technical director. Uh, their responsibility is highly technical in nature, uh, in charge of maybe one or two other warrant officers and a couple NCOs, uh, but the main part of their job was creating the, uh, the infrastructure where we could actually go do offensive missions. Uh, so setting up the computers, the networks, working with commercial vendors so that when we got out to the internet to do uh, offensive missions, we didn't look like we were uh, U.S. government or U.S. Army. Uh, so there's no attribution back. Uh, some late nights, uh, emergency calls, uh, but again, a very highly technical job setting up that network. Uh, that was kind of that lieutenant's main focus. Uh, Dual-hatted as uh, chief of the developers down in Georgia, I had five uh, lieutenants working for me. Uh, and both of those jobs, there were no captains in between, so it was directly second, first lieutenants working for me as a major. Uh, no issues there at all, uh, you know, from, the, from either lieutenants or uh, not having the captains. Uh, but those, those lieutenants working purely as developers, all day, uh, every day in and out for the Army, uh, living as developers. Uh, some flavor of reverse malware engineering, uh, Windows access, Unix access, persistence, all the things you saw on the slide of opportunities to be a developer, uh, they had the opportunity to, to do it. Uh, if you talk to any of them, uh, the ones who are still in all switch to Delta. They love it. They say it's the best job they've ever had. It's also the first and only job they ever had in the Army, uh, so they might be a little bit uh, biased there. Uh, I had the opportunity to intern as a developer when I was in grad school, and I thought it was one of the best jobs I had in the Army, uh, but I think uh, most of the cyber jobs are, are pretty awesome. 
Uh, after that, I went on to become a battalion S3. Yes, even cyber, you'll get staff jobs one day. Uh, as a major, you can look forward to becoming an S3 or XO, unless maybe you come to, to ACI or something, but they, they might still have to do it. Uh, I did have one lieutenant who worked for me in the S3 shop. It was not her first pick. Uh, she was kind of the, the last lieutenant who came to the unit, and so I got to have her as an assistant S3. Uh, her roles, responsibilities were doing everything that I did when I wasn't there, so she had to fill in as a, a major, as a brand new second lieutenant. It was also right during the height of COVID, so we made her the battalion uh, COVID task force lead or or whatever the job title was, she was in charge of making sure the battalion uh, survived COVID. Uh, if we knew what COVID was gonna turn into at the start, we would not have put a brand new second lieutenant in charge of that job, uh, but she crushed it. Uh, she absolutely ran with that staff job. Uh, her intent, uh, offensive cyber, was to be an operator. Uh, based on the great job she did there, we put her into CNO QC, got her to be an operator after serving a, a few months as a assistant battalion S3. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, right after that, I served as a 106 combat mission team lead, uh, all still down in Georgia. Um, there, again, uh, no captains, but I had three lieutenants who worked for me. Uh, you know, on the offensive side, we didn't really have, we don't have platoon leaders like you saw in the uh, 17 Bravo, kind of the 11 Cyber Warfare, but I'd argue that they were really doing a platoon leader job, even though we didn't call it that. I think their official title was Current Operations Officer, uh, Foo Ops Officer, Line of Effort Lead, but they were really operating as those platoon leaders. And they had a small uh, section assigned to them, uh, some NCOs, maybe a warrant officer, and they were in charge of making sure that section could carry out missions that I gave them uh, to execute. Uh, they would do everything from planning offensive cyber operations, uh, help gather intel, and then actually executing the cyber operations in that, uh, that JMOC that uh, I had run in a previous job. I also had one lieutenant on my team who kind of skirted the line again before Deltas existed. Uh, he was um, kind of a, a research and engineering type role. It doesn't exist on paper, but he had a knack for it and it worked out well. He later went on to certify as a 17 Delta, is a, a senior developer now down in Georgia. Uh, uh, but he worked as kind of a developer for the team. Uh, so we're going to talk some vignettes later, and one thing that might pop up is how do you request capabilities, or offensive side, how do you request capabilities if you need them. Uh, having this lieutenant embedded kind of that role on the team, he could sit on the ops as we did them and advocate on our behalf for new offensive capabilities that we needed. Uh, fast forward to the job I'm in now, uh, Cyber National Mission Force up at Fort Meade, uh, and also uh, the uh, 61 National Mission Team team lead. Uh, very similar to a uh, combat mission team down in Georgia for 106. Uh, difference being I actually have captains now. Uh, so being up at the CNMF, I have three captains and I have one Navy lieutenant, which is the same as a captain, just Navy. Uh, and then I have three lieutenants and uh, one Navy ensign and one Navy uh, lieutenant uh, JG. Um, so a, a lot more officers. Uh, I'm in charge of four teams up in uh, CNMF instead of just the one. Uh, but fairly similar roles. The, the two Navy officers are on national cyber protection teams, uh, sub-element or mission element leads, uh, also can fill in as that CPT leader uh, when the CPT uh, lead's not there. On the national mission side, I've got two, well, uh, of the three lieutenants, one is in operator training right now. He's completed uh, CNO QC, so he can do uh, Army Title 10 offensive missions and he's working towards certification for uh, Army Title 50 uh, operations. Uh, so full-time, if he's not doing ops on breaks in between classes, uh, we're training him up to be an uh, offensive uh, cyber operator, the, the ion that you see on some of the slides. Uh, I have a, another lieutenant. She's kind of a, in my Task Force J3 section. Uh, so again, probably not a role she really wants to do. Uh, offensive cyber, 17 alpha, but she's crushing it there as well. Uh, scheduling all of our operations, uh, making sure that the uh, offensive teams have the, the resources they need. And uh, once I find a replacement, I'm probably going to push her out to one of the jobs one of the captains is doing right now as a line of effort lead, or kind of a little bit more than the, the platoon leader type role I had uh, so, uh, officers doing down in Georgia. Uh, other lieutenants kind of doing that R&E type role again. 
Uh, he is thinking about doing a, a 17 Delta, and so I'm letting him explore what it's like to be a developer, work through the JQR, uh, schedule something called the basic skill level exam, uh, so that if he wants to go to the uh, 17 Delta captain's career course and switch over, he'll be postured uh, able to do that. Um, so th those are kind of the jobs that I've had uh, lieutenants do uh, directly for me. Uh, most times it has been directly reporting uh, to me. Uh, so as you get out and to your first jobs and you're a you know, brand new second lieutenant, you might be directly reporting to, uh, to a major. Uh, there might be no, no captains in between. Uh, it'll just depend uh, on the unit and how many uh, uh, captains there are uh, in those positions. Uh, my advice or, or kind of what I expect of lieutenants, uh, three main things. I want you to be able to, to listen, to learn, and to lead. And, and I'll talk about all of those. Um, listening, uh, hugely important. I, I need you to understand uh, what the mission is, uh, what my intent is, and to be able to execute off of that. Uh, I expect that you're going to have questions. If you didn't have questions, I'd think you weren't actually listening. Uh, but I'm not going to answer all of those questions for you. Uh, I'm going to expect you to go out and find uh, answers for that, or at least work to, and then come back if you can't. Uh, part of that listen, you're not always going to get positive uh, feedback or, or affirmation that you're doing a good job. Uh, there's just simply too much going on. Uh, no one's going to be um, telling you all the time, hey, you're doing a great job. Uh, you'll most likely hear if you're not doing a good job, uh, if you don't hear that, it's safe to assume you probably are doing a, a, a good job. I remind myself to tell all my lieutenants they're doing a good job. I just don't myself do a, a good job at, at doing that all the time. Uh, learn. I expect you to, to continue, continually be learning, especially on the offensive side. Uh, even, if you, even if you go straight to grad school after West Point and you come in with a master's of computer science, there's probably an enlisted soldier, definitely a warrant officer, who knows a lot more about cyber and has more experience than you. Uh, I expect you to learn from them uh, about how you can be an effective team member, uh, skills that they've uh, picked up uh, their time uh, on offensive cyber. Uh, there was a uh, former Army cyber commander who once said that we don't fail enough in cyber. Uh, I expect you to fail. Uh, I'm going to give you tasks. And I'm going to give you the latitude to, to fail and make mistakes, and it's going to be OK. Uh, as long as you don't make the same mistakes repeatedly, uh, everything's going to work out at the end of the day. Uh, but I want you kind of pushing that boundary as you learn uh, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. Um, and then lead. Uh, for leading, uh, you know, we talked humility. I think Major Major talked about uh, humility, uh, hugely important. Uh, being able to take constructive criticism, uh, having a, a tenacity, uh, a presence for your soldiers. You know, if you have soldiers doing something, I, I expect you to be there uh, with them as well. Uh, just being around for the missions, not hiding away in an office or at a computer somewhere. Uh, along with that, actually knowing your soldiers. Uh, and I don't mean just knowing their name, but knowing details about them, what they like to do in their free time, what pets they have, what their family like is life, as if uh, they were one of your friends. Um, now, obviously, uh, don't blur the lines with, with fraternization, but I do expect you to, to know the people you work with. Uh, we talked about, you know, people are the mission. Uh, I've always found that if you take care of people, the mission will take care of itself. And so that's something I, I expect of uh, lieutenants as well. Uh, another thing I kind of I expect uh, not to be a complainer or have a bad attitude. Uh, a question came up during one of the uh, breakout sessions. What's the biggest mistake you've ever seen a, a new lieutenant? Uh, do or, or commit. And I said, uh, having a bad attitude, always being negative, not liking the job that they're currently doing, and uh, being very vocal about it. And uh, that is probably the, the biggest mistake I've seen. I'd say, don't worry about whatever your current job is, just do it well, and, and you'll, be, you'll be successful. Uh, some questions for you guys. Who's nervous about being a uh, second lieutenant in Cyber Branch? Okay, good. Uh, you should be, right? It, it's a big endeavor. You're, you're going to be responsible for uh, a lot of things, people, mission, especially on the offensive side. I remember sitting in your shoes uh, knowing that I was going to branch MI, and I was nervous. What does an MI platoon leader do? And we had a, a, a branch day or something similar to this, and you know, we all asked the lieutenants and, and the platoon sergeants who showed up, like, what makes me a, a good platoon leader? And uh, you know, what they said was, take care of your people. 
Uh, if you really care about your people and take care of them, uh, you'll succeed. Uh, if you come offensive side, in addition to uh, kind of the, the role that you take on, you'll also get certified as a uh, mission commander. Uh, and I know some of the breakouts, I've talked about what that is, uh, but a lot of questions came up. Uh, when we do an offensive cyber mission, uh, the core of the team that does it is three people. Uh, one, you've got your operator. Uh, they're the hacker on keyboard doing the actual operation. Uh, two, you've got your exploitation analyst, your EA. They're the one who knows everything there is to know about the network. They've come up with the plan that the operator's doing. Uh, they know the ins and outs, what to expect. And then the third person is your mission commander. Uh, if you come offensive cyber, you're going to be one of those mission commanders. As a mission commander, I expect you to know the left and right limits of what you can do on the, the operation, uh, when to request exceptions, and to work well with that team so they can be successful on their uh, operation. Uh, a couple questions came up, admin versus operational responsibilities. Uh, even if you're on a cyber national mission force, you're still in the Army. You'll still have Army requirements. Uh, good news is you won't have to do an IOCT anymore, just the ACFT. Uh, so that, that'll be done once you graduate. Uh, you'll still have all the mandatory Army training, height, weight, PT test. Uh, there'll also be uh, kind of outside of the job expectations. Uh, you might be put in charge of leading a company morale event, uh, hail and farewell, uh, something like that. Uh, my very first job when I was a MI platoon leader, my battalion commander loved skeet shooting, and so I was the battalion skeet team captain. Uh, I think it was more hazing than anything else because I'd never shot a shotgun, and they all liked to see how big of a bruise I got in my shoulder after trying to, to shoot skeet. Um, you know, uh, I'd say just, just take a deep, deep breath. You'll, you'll be fine uh, as lieutenant as long as you, uh, you uh, can listen, learn, uh, and lead. Um, I'd say also it's important to know your peers and uh, know what's possible and uh, where to look. You know, an event like this where you can hear from defensive, offensive, 17 Bravo, 17 Deltas, and just know what's out there will be hugely important. As you go on to Bullock, getting to know uh, the people that are in your class, what assignments they get, where they're at, so that if you ever have a question that pops up later, sometimes that alone can be more valuable than the uh, periods of instruction uh, that you get there. Um, yeah, I expect, especially offensive side, that you'll have a, a good technical understanding and that you'll be able to make decisions. Uh, you know, if, if you come into the unit and you're afraid to make decisions, that's gonna separate you out from the people who can make a decision, an informed decision, and uh, stick with it there. Okay, uh, I think I covered all of the, uh, the talking points that I had. Uh, what questions does anybody have? They said somebody had to have a question. Who thinks they want to go uh, 17 Alpha Offensive Cyber? All right, a couple of people. Who de definitely doesn't want to do Offensive Cyber? Nobody? One, okay. Couple. Uh, any, qu any questions at all, anybody? Yeah, there we go. Sarah, what was the, the biggest difference moving from working under our cyber to CNMF? Yeah, uh, so working Army Cyber, so one of the service cyber components, and working for something called a, a JFHQC, a Joint Force Headquarters Cyber, uh, you have a, so as a, a combat mission team, that's what I was doing, you have a purely offensive mission. Uh, your job all day, every day, is to go do offensive cyber against targets that support that uh, um, combatant level command. Uh, working in the Cyber National Mission Force, our mission is to defend the nation. Uh, so even though we're offensive cyber team, uh, the flavor of that is defense. Uh, so our job is to know adversary, we call them uh, malicious cyber actors, MCAs, uh, what they're up to and stay a step ahead of them. I like to say our job is to hack the hackers uh, so that we can help protect the United States. Uh, so that's, that's the biggest difference between the two. Yeah. Yeah.
Yep, uh, absolutely have to coordinate. Uh, we're fortunate that Cyber Command is a, a combatant command, uh, so we have that four star who can help advocate on our behalf. Uh, but any effects that we want to do in someone else's uh, region, we, we do coordinate uh, with them. Yeah. Sir, so there is a training program which you may be familiar with, the CNOQC, the on-network operator qualification course. Are there similar training pipelines for the exploitation analyst and other such work roles? Yep. Uh, so each of the uh, work roles, I think it was the last block on the top of uh, Colonel Arnold's slide that said unit-specific training. Uh, depending on what work role you get, you're going to go into a, a pipeline of training. Uh, if you come up and you're, if you come to an offensive unit and you're not sure what job you want to do, uh, we do have kind of a, a test that will test uh, and kind of give you a result of maybe you would be good at this. Maybe you'd be a great EA, an operator, developer, uh, or other work roles. Uh, so those type of, uh, just uh, not exams, but a, a basic test can help sort that out. But yeah, every, every work role does. I'd say as a lieutenant too is a great time to experiment and s try different jobs. So I've had uh, lieutenants try to be an operator. Uh, fail CNOQC and then go uh, on to do a different work role. And they were glad they did that as a lieutenant versus trying to pigeonhole themselves in a, as a, a captain or another uh, position. Anybody else? All right. Thank you, Major Hudak.